Hi everyone, here is Antoine from Autochroma. In this video, I will show you how you can batch export clips from your Premiere Pro timeline directly into individual files within a few clicks. It is using AfterCodec's new multi-render features and it is scalable to as much clips as you have on your timeline. So if you have 100 clips, this will do just fine. As you can see here, if I have this timeline, then the method I'm going to show you will export those files from Premiere Pro or Media Encoder and on both Windows and OS X. Basically, each clip you see on the timeline has its own file exported and is rendered from the ins and outs you set on the timeline and with the name you set on the clip on the timeline. I believe this is the quickest method to perform this operation in Premiere Pro. So first I will show you the previous method for batch exporting. Then I will introduce to you after codex the exporter plugin for the BCC video software. I will show you how you can achieve this operation with after codex, of course. And I will conclude this video by telling you its limitation and of course its huge benefits over other method. So the previous method you can see all over the internet and on YouTube tutorials is the nested clip method. So basically if you have this timeline, you would um, it, you would nest, cre create nested sequence from those clips for each one of them. So for example, let's create a nested sequence for this one. So a nested sequence, introduction, then it appears green. Then I will do this one, for example, nested castle. And of course, you will need also to match the audio track, which is not always easy, especially if you're doing a music video clip. And then you will need to go into your project panel, find the nested sequence created, and click right and export media. You can't do this right from the timeline. You will need to select your codecs, and you will create this for Adobe Media Encoder. So the issue with these techniques first is it's using Amy. So I don't really like it. I prefer sometimes to just render straight from Premiere Pro. Um, and most importantly, you can't do this for a hundred clip. You would need to do this manually, the nested thing. Click right nest and set a name. It will be really painful. Also, the nested clips, they pollute your project, your Premiere Pro project panel. I don't really like that. And it's a, a little bit harder to choose the output name. You would need to change individually all of them here. It's it's a, not that good, it's a mess, and I, I'm going to show you a better method using my plugin called AfterCodec. So what is AfterCodec? AfterCodec is a new Premiere Pro exporter. It also, it's also available for Media Encoder and After Effects. You can see all its features on this web page. Uh, you can read our blog articles, there's some really interesting stuff. And also there is a free trial you can test. So if you would just want to test this feature of, or if all your clips are under 500 frames, then you can just use this feature for free. So just click download here. It should automatically download a zip for your platform. So here I'm on Windows. Once this zip is downloaded, you just have to extract it. Of course, you should exit all other Adobe software that are running. You just go through the installer. It will install in MediaCore the Autochroma After Codec plugins. It will also install a panel in this extension folder. Here, you can see it's here. So now this is done, you can open up Premiere Pro again. After codec, as you can read on the website, can export in lots of different codecs like X264, X265, ProRes, and HAP. And it has a tons of new feature and advanced option, option for encoding. And I'm continually improving it with new features, such as this one, which is quite recent. So I'm just going to show you how you can export uh, your sequences from Premiere Pro in general before I dive into how you can use the multi-render feature. So 
whenever you have a timeline or a media you want to export, you just uh, file export it or control M on Windows. And you have this new after codex in the format drop down. You select it, and all you have to do now is to configure the encoding options. Here is the codec clicks you can choose from. So here we're just going to use H264 for this demo. And here for the multi render feature, you will need to take this checkbox. And then you can click export and it's going to export thanks to after codec. So now that you know how to use after codec the exporter, I'm going to show you how you can use our awesome new feature called multi render. So how I did it is after codec is going to read the markers that are on your timeline, the markers that appear here, not the markers on clip, markers on your timeline. Let's edit this marker. It needs to have a duration and its comment section should begin by an underscore. And that's pretty much it. And here you can find the suffix that is going to be append to your file. This is an after codec multi-render marker. Let's add another marker here. And it doesn't matter. It's not going to be used for the render, OK? Because its comment section doesn't begin by an underscore. This is important to understand if you have markers on your timeline that you want to keep, or if you want to do this manually. But this will be a tedious process if you will need to do this for all, for all the clips on your timeline. So I designed a new panel for you. You can find it here in Window Extension, After Codec Panel. And once it's opened, it will, and you store, you save your project file, it will be here forever. You won't need to open it again. So now we have four buttons. And it's going to automate this whole process for you. So here I can, delete, I can show all the multi render marker that exists. There is only this one. So, and I can delete all the multi render marker. So it just deleted this one. This one is still here because it's not a multi render marker. So now if I wanted to uh, add automatically all the markers for all the clips, I could click here or I could also select manually and then click the second button. Oh, it added six marker. That's great. Exactly what I want. So now it's pretty much almost done. All you have to do is export using after codec. And here's the trick. Here you go in after codec settings and you tick this checkbox. It's very important. This is going to tell after codec look at the marker and do something, export the files individually. So for example, I'm going to use H264. Match source. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to export in this folder. Let's delete previous files. And I can tell what will be the prefix of the file name. File name. Let's go and just export. That's it. And it's done. As you can see, the six clips are here and it exported pretty fast and this marker wasn't used. So that's it. Now I'm going to tell you about the limitation of this feature and of course it's huge benefit. So the limitation for now is you can't select audio track. You only can select uh, video, uh, video clips, not audio clips, I mean. Uh, if you really need to select audio clip, then just contact us on the website. Uh, you can, on the bottom of this page, just click here and select after codec and tell, you, tell us your story. Um, also, the time code of the, your original clip won't be transposed on the output file, but if you really need that feature, I can try to implement it, just contact me. Um, the biggest drawbacks of this limitation is it the clips needs to have the same resolution and frame rate. Uh, because it's, the timeline will always have the same resolution and frame rate. That's a big drawback, I know. So if you really need that feature, just, again, contact us on your website, and I'll see what I can do. But for now, it's still the best way to do it. And know about the huge benefits you get. So first, you can change the clip name. If you're on CC 2018 or more, 
you can change here, click right and rename the clip, and it's going to change the timeline clip. It's not going to change the clip, of the name clip on in the project panel. So if you import it multiple times, you can have different name. Uh, you can change the name, the name, and the next time you're going to use uh, multi-render marker, the button here, is going to use this new name here. So for example, it's going to write, hey, that's quite practical. On CC 2019, unfortunately, this feature doesn't exist, so you will be stuck with the project source clip name. Also, you can prefix the final name. It's quite practical. Uh, here, I decided to use multi-render. That's, that's great. I can prefix the output files with wh whatever I want. Um, you are sure that all the video files were exported using the same encoding settings. So if you have a peace of mind about this. It's really easy to use. Um, you can also edit the markers yourself manually. Um, if you have like a fixed uh, project structure, uh, you could just save the marker inside the project and just leave them as is and use them later on. Now touch them again and uh, it will always render the same thing. That's really practical. Um, also, you can change the renders after, you can change the marker after clicking the button and before encoding, if there is some, some small adjustment you would like to make, for example, changing the name or changing the ins and out. And of course, um, a really good thing about this is you can, for example, use adjustment layer. So, for example, you can have like fake adjustment layer with nothing inside them, or you could even disable this video track, but they have an in and an out and a name, and you could use the panel on this, on those one. Whatever what is inside, you will use. You can use them to direct and tell after codec, please render this. This is quite practical. Of course, it depends on your needs. Um, it depends on your project, what you need to export. But um, I'm sure this is flexible enough for you, and you will make the best out of it. So now a little bit about after codec. Um, you can find after codec on our website. You can buy it there. Um, there is one license for Premiere Pro, one license for After Effects, and one license for Media Encoder, and you have a discount if you buy the three together. You can also buy our plugin on ascript.com. So you can go on ascript after codec. And you can buy it here. If you have an account on ascript and you prefer to buy it there, then just do it. Um, if you want to buy the three together, the discount will be added in the cart. And After Codec also has uh, lots of cool feature. So you're not buying this just for the multi-render feature. You also have lots of other things. So for example, you can have a custom frame rate here. That's quite practical. If you have unconventional frame rate, uh, we have a button here to quickly set the resolution to a half or a quarter or eighth. Here, it's going to change automatically, compute the right dimensions. Uh, again, that's practical, saving you a few clicks. And also, we have different audio layout here. Uh, we have Ambisonic, of course, for the VR360. Depending on how you configure your Premiere Pro project, it could be very effective. You could export all the audio channels from your Premiere Pro project sequence, and you could, once the file is rendered, you could import them again into your Premiere Pro sequence. It's really a great feature if you learn how to use it. We will make a video about it or in an article on the website, so stay, stay tuned. And just remember that if you click uh, this button, export is going to use Premiere Pro, so after codec for Premiere Pro. And if you use this button, it's going to call you the render for AME, so it's going to use after codec for AME. So theoretically, you can just buy after codec for AME and use this feature and also export uh, from After Effects using After Codec, you just using After Codec for Media Encoder license, if you just want to buy one plugin. So, thank you for watching this video, and happy patch exporting with After Codec!